In this video, I'm going to start taking a deeper dive into how I built the Benchmark Division B tower. If you haven't already watched my previous video where I covered the basic rules, please watch that one first. Specifically, I want to talk about the overall approach I decided to take, and then show in detail how I went from the rules to the exact shape of this design. Remember, what I'm going to present is not the only way to approach this problem. I hope you can learn from my process and modify it to be your own with whatever works best for you. This year's rules force us into a design with a wide base at the bottom and a narrow column on the top. Perhaps the biggest insight for this year is that it can work well to treat these components completely separately from one another, and only when you are satisfied with both, combine them into a completed tower. Regardless of if you are attempting the bonus or not, we want these components to be balanced. It doesn't do any good if we have a strong base with a weak column or the other way around. For example, if we are designing to the bonus rules, each piece needs to hold over 15 kilograms and each one can be independently tested to that before final assembly. As you can see from these pictures, testing them separately will require a couple new things, such as a new testing surface with a small hole for just the column and a custom loading block for just the base. I will talk about these in more detail in future videos. Another huge benefit to approaching the tower as two separate components is that you or your team can divide and conquer. These complete towers can take a long time to build, and you basically cut that time in half when dealing with just the column or base. So how do we go from the rules to a completed design? I don't like to build anything without some form of assembly jig, so let's start there. The first step is to try and design the jig, but how do we know how to build that? The first thing is to make sure you fully understand the rules. I can't emphasize this enough. You should know the rules well enough that you could be an event supervisor at a competition. What I'm going to show is the detailed process I use for the bonus design, but the same thing can be applied for the non-bonus version as well. I'm old school, so I like to work with a pencil and graph paper. If possible, try and create a full-scale drawing of your design, but it's okay to scale it down if necessary. I like to think of this process as similar to approaching a math story problem, everyone's favorite thing to do. Here's a side view of the tower to help us design critical aspects of the jig. In the previous rules video, I documented the test base part of the rules in pretty good detail, so review that if you need a refresher. I have two horizontal lines drawn above the ground plane, one at 25 centimeters and one at 50 centimeters. These dimensions come right out of the rules. 50 centimeters is the minimum height required for the completed tower, and the 25 centimeter height is where the 8 centimeter ring must fit around your tower. It's always a good idea to give yourself a little extra room for error with these design specifications. If we made the tower exactly 50 centimeters and happened to be 1 millimeter off in sanding or just tolerance in competition check in, you would risk being tiered. We want to avoid that at all costs. So I like to design in an extra 5 millimeters in the overall height. I have drawn another horizontal line showing this at 50.5 centimeters and have placed the loading block in position to better visualize the actual finished tower. In similar fashion, we want to give ourselves a buffer for the 8 centimeter ring height. This time I have drawn a horizontal line 5 millimeters below the 25 centimeter height line. If we plan on starting our narrow column at this lower line, it will guarantee that the base won't interfere with the ring and should easily pass the requirement. We now have the column height defined from these two buffer lines. The column will be exactly 26 centimeters tall. We also know that the base height will be 24.5 centimeters. But wait a second, how do we know how wide the base of that column should be? Here is a picture of the completed side view. Let's focus on the base legs for now, and specifically their angle. This is just a 2D side view of the tower to keep things simple, but the engineering principles I'm going to explain are the same in 3D. We know that there are going to be vertical loads being applied to the base legs like this. If these legs were perfectly vertical, the only thing we'd have to worry about is the buckling failure, very similar to the column in this design. But because the rules demand a wide base and the 8 centimeter ring fit around the column, our base legs have a fairly significant angle to them. This angle will create another thing we need to worry about, which is called a moment or torque. It is calculated by multiplying the vertical force by the perpendicular distance to the rotation point. 
As you might have guessed by now, we want that angle to be as vertical as possible. That means that the mid-level width, the top of the base, and the bottom of the column should be as wide as possible. A quick side note, if you find the idea of calculating these forces and moments by hand an exciting concept, if you choose to pursue a college degree in something like mechanical or civil engineering, you'll get to take an entire course on the topic. Just don't blame me when you're working late hours on your homework sets. Okay, back to our towers. So now we know we want that middle dimension to be as wide as possible. But how do we go about calculating that? It's time for a little more math. Here's a top-down view of the problem statement. What is the maximum size square that will fit in a circle of a given radius? Of course, these days, you can just type that into Google and it will send you to a calculator page. But since we like math here, I thought it'd be good to show the derivation. With the circle of radius r, we can inscribe a square where the side s is two times the length of the right triangle shown here. Using the Pythagorean theorem, we can compute that l is the square root of r squared divided by 2. We know that s is 2 times l, so plugging in a radius of 4 centimeters, the side of our maximum square is 5.657 centimeters. We might be tempted to make that with 5.65 centimeters and be done with it, but we have to remember about two important things. The first is that our legs make the column bigger than the assembly jig, and that we want to have a safety margin here as well. Somewhat arbitrarily, I decided to go with a jig width of 52.5 millimeters. And if you include the size of 1 8 inch square legs, that would make the total width 53.85 millimeters. We know our 8 centimeter ring can handle 56.57 millimeter sides, so that gives us a reasonable safety margin of 2.72 millimeters. Finally, back to this picture. And now we know exactly what the width of the bottom of the column is, 5.25 centimeters. Remember, we are designing just the assembly jig here, not representing the finished tower. The next somewhat arbitrary design decision I made was to have the column have a 2 degree taper. This helps with adding some inherent stability to the column and slightly reduces the mass needed for the cross members. I chose 2 degrees as it still allows for the top of the column to be large enough to easily support the 5 centimeter loading block. We now have enough information to create the CAD for a 3D printed jig for the column. I will share that STL file and show how I used it in the column optimization video. Now we just need to repeat this process to get the exact base dimensions. We already know the top dimensions of the base as they are identical to the bottom of the column. We can reuse the equation we derived earlier to figure out the minimum size of our base to fit the 29 centimeter circle. If we plug in a radius of 14.5 centimeters, we get a result of 20.51 centimeters. Here I have drawn the minimum dimension of 20.51 centimeters. For the column jig, I extruded the 3D part vertically at a 2 degree angle with a height of 26 centimeters. Because the base jig shares the same plane as the bottom of the column, it was easiest to pick a good angle to extrude the base part down 24.5 centimeters. I let the CAD program help me here, and I wound up settling on an angle of 18.34 degrees. The final width of the base turned out to be 214.95 millimeters, which gives a total buffer of 9.85 millimeters, or nearly 5 millimeters per leg. We now have all the information needed to create an accurate 3D model of our jig. Once you have all the critical measurements, it's not too difficult to create a jig using the CAD program of your choice. In the next video, I will focus on my process for building and optimizing the column part of the tower, resulting in the column tested in the benchmark build. Thanks for watching, and feel free to reach out to me with any specific questions.